Good morning. Welcome to Inlay Lake. The unique floating villages of Inlay Lake make it one of the most popular sites in all of Myanmar. With stunning nature, buzzing local industry, and some even more unexpected gems on the ground. So whether you choose to explore by boat or bike, these are the top things you need to see. And trust me, there is a lot. Inlay is the second largest lake in Myanmar. So obviously, the most popular thing to do is to take a long boat tour around the sites. But to see the lake in its best light, I recommend starting early. Really early. We ended up beating both the crowds and the sun. But we were still greeted by a couple of local fishermen who put on quite a performance. The iconic leg rowing fishermen are synonymous with Inlay Lake. <laughs> but don't expect to see them do any actual fishing. They've obviously figured out what the tourists really want, the best photos possible. It was a slightly awkward experience, but it made for a good montage. After the lads moved on, we watched the sun rise over the mountaintops and we got our first proper look at the lake. It is incredibly peaceful out here. Everything's so still. The sun is up. Let's go see some sights. Our boatman took us towards the first of the floating villages on the lake. Inlay is home to the Intha people who live in incredible stilted houses on the water. It's really interesting floating around all the little villages on the lake and just seeing how people just live their entire lives on the water. You've got kids going to school in boats, you've got their school is there on the water. You've got markets, gardens, temples, and of course you've got all the industry as well. It's just an entire way of life. There is quite a set route of tourist sites around the lake. We started out at a traditional silversmith. Hello. Hello. Where we were greeted with a lovely cup of tea before they gave us a tour around the shop. But we actually got there so early that the silversmith himself hadn't even arrived yet. So our first stop was at a local silversmith and now we are at the five day rotating market, which as its name suggests, moves around the lake on different days of the week. These days, the market is mainly for tourists, so it is a good place to pick up some local crafts as souvenirs. Next, we moved on to one of Inlay's many textile workshops, where they weave cloth out of the fibers of a lotus plant. These days, Inlay is one of the only places in the world where you can see this practice take place. And the machines themselves are pretty mesmerizing to watch. even stop to see some cigar making where every worker rolls about 500 cigars per day by hand using completely natural ingredients. But my highlight of the boat tour was at the very last stop. Hidden off the main lake down some beautiful estuaries, we walked on land towards the village of Indane. made famous by a vast, ruined temple complex. We've just taken a short walk away from the boat to the temples of Indane, which are a thousand pagodas that are all ruined like this. Really cool. The pagodas are believed to date back to the 17th or 18th century and most of them haven't been restored since then. 
making for a really unspoilt site. And you can explore all of the little entrances and enclaves to find the hidden treasures within. Proper Indiana Jones vibes now. The further you head up the hill, the more intact the pagodas become. But they're still really impressive. And this isn't the only sight to see off the lake. In fact, renting a bike is an equally great way to explore the area. The main tourist town on the lake is Nuang Shui, where a simple geared bike will cost you as little as two pounds for the day. Hello there. Hi. And once you get out of town, there are some beautiful views of the countryside. This has actually been the coldest place we've been to in Southeast Asia so far, especially in the mornings and evenings. So it's about 9 a.m. now, and we're gonna go and check out the local hot spring. Just outside the village of Kwangdang, natural hot springs are channeled into three different pools, kept at various temperatures. It is quite a small place, but perfect for some relaxation. Unexpected Gems of Myanmar, part 75. There's even a bar so you can order drinks and food. A great start to our day of cycling. They're actually open from 5 a.m. here, which I imagine is an amazing time to come when it's really cold. But this will do just nicely. Just across the road from the hot spring are these steps that lead up to a temple that should have a really good view over the area. You can see right over to the lake from here. Awesome view. We cycled on to another unexpected gem, the village of Kuang Dang, a place entirely dedicated to making tofu. We had a guide called Yam who showed us all of the hidden corners and secrets of the village. Every market stall, every house was preparing a different kind of tofu-related snack. From savoury crisps to sweet donut-like desserts, which was really interesting to see being made. And the samples just kept on flowing. <laughs> After we were done eating tofu, we couldn't really be bothered to cycle all the way back to town. So we grabbed a lift with one of the villagers and we got some extra views of the beautiful lake. The next morning, we cycled out to one more stop. Something that we really wanted to see. One thing I didn't expect to find in rural Myanmar is a vineyard. The Red Mountain Estate was founded in 2002 and the grounds are stunning. Offering amazing views over the countryside. We did the wine tasting, which is actually something that I've never done before. They had both reds and whites, which I thought were pretty nice. But I'm no expert, despite how qualified I look here. spend the evening looking over the views of the mountains and the lake in the distance, which was the perfect ending to our time in Inlay. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed following us around Inlay Lake, please leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. There'll be some more videos coming soon. I'll see you then.